الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله فصلى الله عليه صلاة وسلاما يليقان بمقام سيد الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran always reminds us and pushes us to say the word of truth and the word, the right word and the right time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا Believers, be conscious about Allah and say the right word and say what's right and what's truthful and the result يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم so that Allah will always fix your deeds and forgive your sins ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما and whomsoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will indeed get a great reward. Brothers and sisters, as the first Jum'ah, the first Friday in the new year, I received a message from a beloved friend of mine 
he is in his late 20s and he was asking me about life in general and about setting goals and achieving those goals and he was asking how can I really know that I'm moving forward towards what I define as success he feels that subhanallah year after year and many people many brothers many sisters have the same concern that year after year my life is running and I feel that I'm not the person that I want to be when I was a kid I feel that when I look in the mirror and I start comparing myself with others my friends they have a better career they have a better family relationship some of them are married some of them have kids you start comparing yourself with others and ask yourself what's wrong why am I not being the person that I aspire to be and subhanallah I feel this is the uh, struggle for many young and old individuals that how can I make sure that I am living the life that I'm supposed to be living and it might be a challenge to give a complete answer in the khutbah but you can consider this as a discussion starter something that to consider so that inshallah ta'ala having the right intention in mind to change will start from having the right knowledge of what you what you really want to become so the first thing is sometimes you have a vision for myself in the future I want to be a doctor by age of 27 I want to have a business and I want to accumulate my first million dollar by this time I want to get married and have kids by age of 25 sometimes we have this very clear or very well-defined definition of success and this vision board that they talk about is not really it has a very materialistic idea of success it's success according to what other people define as success whereas in Islam we tell Islam teaches us to have the right intention not the right vision and there's a big difference between the two Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us in a hadith that many of us know muttafaqun alayh narrated by so many scholars like Bukhari and Muslim innama al-a'malu bin niyyat wa innama li kulli imri'in ma nawa intentions are decided uh, uh, deeds are decided according to their the, to the intention behind them and every person shall receive what they intended to do so if you have not let me give an example you might have a vision that you want to become a best-selling author and write books and you know and just publish this book everywhere now you may not be the right material for an author so that's a vision where but if your intention is to spread knowledge you may become a teacher and you look at yourself oh my god when I was a kid I wanted to be an author now I'm just a teacher well who told you that this teacher is not sharing knowledge with tons of students every year and one of those will become a best-selling author and you will have your intention of spreading knowledge even if you didn't get your vision of having your name on that book you see the difference subhanallah and even if you look at the Arabic word niyya niyya nawa are there niyya which means which is the Arabic for, word for intention is also used for nawa which is a seed so sometimes Islam does not really talk about prescribed definitions of success Islam teaches us that you should plant the right seed for success and that seed might grow to become a tree this tree might be might be bigger than even your own imagination this tree might grow on a different soil this tree might give other fruits might give, might give other seeds that will grow and grow and grow subhanallah so the idea brothers and sisters Islam teaches us that success does not have one way shape or form there's no one definition of success it's not only in materialistic standards it's not by getting a degree it's not by getting a job at a reputable company success has a different definitions and different forms and once we start with this intention in mind even if things change even if you did not get accepted into that dentistry school or into that business school or did you, you did not work at your company of your dreams guess what if you have the right intention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide that intention to the right way so my again let's backtrack my advice to that to that brother or that sister 
who feel lost in life, who feel that time is going on and on and they are not getting what they wanted. First of all, forget about the vision of what you want to be. Tell me about your intention. Why do you want to do what you want to do? As a Muslim, you are first of all a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have never created jinns and mankind except they worship me. So my intention from anything I am doing, I'm worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship is not only what you do in the masjid. In the masjid, you recharge your battery for Iman, so that when you get outside the masjid, you are implementing the values of Islam in your everyday life. So that's my intention, that's my niyyah, not my vision. And then inshallah ta'ala things will fall in place. Let me get to the second aspect or second element of my advice to that young brother. Be a gardener. Don't be an engineer with a fixed mindset for success. Now I'm an engineer myself, so I hope my fellow engineers don't get offended. Sometimes engineers design a house or design a car based on very hard requirements. I want this house to be this feet long and this feet high. We have a very well-defined, you know, blueprint. Usually in life, things don't work this way. Usually in life, there are many variables. Again, back to the marriage example. Things are, even if you get married, you cannot have your kids based on exactly what you expect them to be. In parenting, they talk about carpenter parents versus gardener parents. Carpenter parents want their kids to be exactly what they want them to be. I want my son to be a doctor. I want my daughter to be this and that. They try to dictate for their kids everything about their life. Whereas a gardener, they try to plant the seed and nurture that seed with the right environment, with the right water. Make sure that you pick the right soil for it. Make sure that you are planting in the right season. You know, a gardener does not try to plant fruits that are not compatible for the winter, for example. They try to pick the right environment, the right season, the right water. And then this gardener will always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always have the connection with Allah that their seed will bear fruit. So being a gardener, a gardener me, me, means that you are not dictating every single step of your life. Many young you know, students, when they are in college, they come and ask me, should I do this major or that major? They want their life planned out for the next 20 years. And the problem is, this is how we teach them in college, before that, in high school, in middle school, in elementary school. It's all about a set, you know, courses. You finish this course, you, you take that course. And then you have to do this internship. But life is not this way. Life is never linear. Life is full of unexpected events, full of surprises. The environment around us, back to the plant, there are so many layers of environment. First of all, you have the economic, the economy in general. Some people say that we are coming for a, that a recession, a recession is coming very soon. So you have to plan for it. This is something you cannot predict. There are some stuff within a certain industry that, you know, this industry is going down, another industry is going up. You have your own environment, your own life. Sometimes you might be going through trouble in your family and you cannot expect yourself to be the same as other students who are same age, but they have a different environment. They have a different thing going on in their life. So if you are a gardener, you don't really care about how the result will look like. What are the exact dimensions of the tree? You care about your own seed, your niya, your nawa, and you plant it and you are so connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this seed grow. And what if that seed does not grow? Well, guess what? You have done your part. You have exerted the effort, then you have to pivot, you have to change. You are not concerned about the final result, you're concerned about doing your action, subhanAllah. Brothers, I've seen many young professionals, and they're 25, 30 years old, they get frustrated and they get depressed and they try asking themselves, am I wrong? Am I bad? Does Allah not like me because I'm not achieving what I'm supposed to achieve? Well, maybe your vision about success is not really what's best for you. Maybe you are looking at outside the window and comparing yourself with other friends 
And even them, they might, not, they might be doing the same thing. Even those friends that are supposedly successful, they might be feeling miserable from the inside. You never know. Sometimes you have, instead of looking outside the window and defining yourself by others, maybe you have to look into the mirror and ask yourself, what is success for me? What does make me happy? What does make me really achieving, subhanAllah? So a, car, a gardener cares about the process, not the product. And let me give you an example. Someone asking themselves, I'm not married and I'm growing older and subhanAllah, they feel bad about it. Well, why don't you focus on something that you can control, that you can control? Am I becoming marriage ready? Did I take the right courses? Did I read the right books? Did I educate myself about marriage? Did I teach myself how to deal with the opposite gender in a way? Did I improve my communication skills so that when the right person comes, I am ready for that completion of my half of my religion to be there? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we have the, the, the wrong expectation of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what the future holds for us. Uh, a gardener will focus on habits more than results. Let me give you an example. People who want to memorize the Quran in two years, for example. This is kind of an achievement goal that if you don't achieve, this is a hard goal, that if you don't achieve, you'll feel frustrated. Why don't you think about it differently? I want to memorize half a page every week. This is a habit. This is building habit as opposed to having a hardly set goal. People who say, I want to lose 20 pounds in six months. Again, this is a hard goal that you may or may not achieve. And if you don't achieve, you will feel frustrated. What did you think about differently? I want to work out three times a week. And I want to make sure that I, I eat healthy during my day. Again, you are focusing on a process, not on a well-defined goal or achievement. Someone who says, I want to be a published author in one year. Well, this may or may not happen. But if you tell myself, yourself, I want to write 500 words every day or every week, then you are talking about a habit, not a well-defined goal. Brothers and sisters, if you start asking yourself, how can I become the better version of myself? The first checkpoint is, what is your intention? Do you have the right intention or do you have only a vision of success? Number two, are you being a gardener or are you being a designer or an engineer with a well-defined you know, definition of success? The third advice that I tell this brother and all the other sisters who are asking, trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look for the divine help from Allah. If you ask every successful person, and wallahi do this, consider this as an experiment after this khutbah. Go ask every successful person according to your own definition of success which I told you before, it's not always accurate. Ask a business person who has opened multiple businesses or an engineer who went all the way in the ladder, in the corporate ladder, or some successful author or some teacher, any, any definition of success, ask them. They will always tell you, if they are humble, it's not only my work. It's not only my own effort. I was at the right place at the right time. There is some hidden secret of success that I cannot attribute to my own degrees, to my own effort, to my own habits. There is always a divine intervention. And that's what we call in Islamic terminology, the barakah. The blessing, the divine help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that me and you cannot quantify. And even the top business people in the whole world, they cannot identify this. It's, they might not say Allah, they will say it's the universe or someone helping them. So trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so important if you are the right gardener. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, See the seed that you sow. Are you the ones who grow it? Or we are the ones, or, or, or it is us, the ones who grow it. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can be a, car, a gardener, you can plant the right seed and the right time, but your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what will make this bear fruit and become the tree that's even beyond your own imagination. One of my favorite stories of all time mentioned in Sahih Muslim about a man walking in the desert. And this man saw or heard a voice telling a cloud, go to the land of so and so and pour the rain on that land only. 
So that cloud went in a very specified direction. There was this farm in the middle of nowhere. It started pouring rain, and then the cloud went away. And the man was like, the man was like, subhanallah. Usually, rizq happens in a way, it's unseen, it's ghaib. We don't see it. We don't quantify it. This person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, showed him an element of the unseen. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us this authentic hadith. So the man went to, ha to that farm, knocked on his door. Hey, what's your name, brother? And he, he told him the name, and he heard the same name that he heard from that voice. He said, uh, what's so special about you? How do you do your business? You know, when you meet a successful person, an entrepreneur, a CEO, they start interviewing him, and they start, they start sharing their habits and their, you know, their, the books they read and everything. So the guy asked him, what's so special about you? And then after the guy said, oh, everything is normal, but I think what I do different is that when, I, when I'm in the beginning of the season, I expect, I predict the outcome, the produce of my land. And I divide it into three portions. One third I spend on myself and my family. One third I, don't, uh, I invest in my land so that it keeps on producing more and more and more. And one third, I donate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the poor and the needy. So the guy said, subhanallah, because of this, you and only you are being, uh, you know, are given that rizq, that rain in this land. The guy understood. First of all, he is spending less on his family, right? He's not spending 100% on his family, only a third. But by doing so, by having the mindset of, you know what, maybe I don't need all of that money. Maybe my definition of success is driving the latest car and being in a bigger house and just having a fancy wedding. Maybe this, this is what's making you poor. Don't always accuse outer factors for what's happening to you. Maybe our definition of a good life is not according to what people think and what your family thinks, and what your culture thinks. So the guy was able to be very practical, to be content with less. That's one third. The other third is he invested the outcome, the produce of his land into his own land again. He made sure he has the right you know, uh, process and the right tools and the right mindset that you know what, I need to grow this. And as we said before, if you have a, a process goals from your life, you want to work out more if you want to memorize more quran consistently this is the way to achieve success success is not an overnight success brothers and sisters and number third why are you doing all of this the guy the guy realized that allah is the one who's giving him all of the money and all the rain so he made sure that he donated for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back to the intention back to why are you planting the seed to begin with our definition, our definition of success is not that of a vision and very well-defined image of success. It's about planting the right seeds and being a gardener and trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because success in this life or in the afterlife only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this reminder a benefit for me and all the brothers and sisters who are looking back at their life and asking, how can I change? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us set the right intentions, to help us have the right habits so that we change and, so and, and to connect us to him so that he will give us rizq. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, our vision for success is not limited by this word. Our definition of a successful person is always connected to the akhirah. If you look at the dunya, if you look only at what people perceive as success, then let me tell you, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. When you think about dunya plus akhirah, when you think about doing some real work or earning some real money or earning, gaining beneficial knowledge that will really benefit the people, then you are talking about success 
in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the last few moments of this khutbah, let me share the reflection on the passing of a giant from our community, someone who is truly successful, even if in the eyes of the people of the world, they consider her as someone very normal. Sister Iman Jasim Um Umar, rahimahullah ta'ala, who passed away three weeks ago almost. And in the eyes of the people of the world, the worldly materialistic you know, standards, she was a mother who stayed at home. She didn't have career aspirations. She didn't even drive because for her driving was very difficult. Many people don't know that. She did not live in a mansion. She lived in a very decent house. So that's in the material life. If you look at akhira life, we don't know what's going to happen in the hereafter. But in the dunya, her funeral was attended by thousands of people in a weekday, not even in a weekend. Imams, scholars, activists from all across the country, if not all over the world, they sent messages of mourning and they said how she, this person impacted them. I personally was impacted by her by, by, in many occasions. Her books that she sold for stories were tens of thousands of copies that were sold only in the past two weeks after her death. The millions, millions that she raised for the orphans around the world are continuing and her, her, subhanAllah, her legacy is growing every week after her death, subhanAllah, and we're only three weeks after her death. Sister Iman Jasim, I invite all of you to look her up, Iman Jasim, look up even the articles in the free press and other, you know, and other uh, outlets talking about how this mother, 58 years old, rahimahullah, impacted a whole lot of orphans impacted a whole lot of people, a whole lot of families. Many people were taught Quran. My kids were taught Quran by her. By, by her. My kids finished Surah Al-Baqarah reading on her hands. If you think about legacy, if you think about true impact in this world, please, let's redefine our focus. Let's redefine our vision of success. Let's focus on planting seeds as opposed to just looking at, the big, at a materialistic picture. Let's focus on, you know, a process and habits as opposed to just one time overnight success. Let's be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the one who puts the barakah, the blessing in everything that you do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us become the better version of ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless those who passed away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us improve by the minute and by the second. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us compete with our own selves and not compete with others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us plant the seed of change for our habits, for ourselves, for our families, and for, for our careers and jobs starting from today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us look back at this khutbah at this time next year inshallah ta'ala and notice the real change that happened in our life because of our intentions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our parents, to bless our community, to bless everyone who's trying to make, to, 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 to produce more good in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our mothers, those who passed away and those who are still alive, and to help us become the best children for our, for our mothers. Allahumma gfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma anna na'udhu bika anna dhilla au nudhal, au nazilla au nuzal, au nazlim au nudlam, au najhala wa jahla alayna. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.